Cannes 2000, the first time the Africa Cup of Nations was hosted between two countries. Ghana co-hosted with Nigeria, and Ghana were unbeaten in the group stages and were scheduled to face a high-flying South African side in the knockout round. 6th February 2000. It will be the last time the Black Stars will lose a game at the Babayara Sports Stadium. I remember that game clearly, and I remember the goal scorer of the match, Yabunga Noveti. It was across from the right, and he rose highest to head the ball uh, into the net. Uh, you know, at that time, Ghana was hosting the tournament. People were really, really expectant. Um, we then thought we could have won the competition. We had a good team. The entire nation was backing the team. The team had played uh, all of its matches in Accra, and it was the first match um, that went to Kumasi because of the progress from the group stages of the competition. So naturally, um, you know, the supporters came out in numbers, but surely they were disappointed with the outcome of the match. Ghana has actually played against the finalist of the 1998 African Cup of Nations. That was one. Two, we were actually not prepared as host until it fell off Kenya and we became co-host with Nigeria. So our team wasn't that ready and strong as we all thought. And I wasn't so surprised when we lost to South Africa. But I was surprised that Kumasi, after all they had done, the fans, knowing that the team wasn't good enough and cheering them on, Still couldn't subdue these South Africans, especially Siabonga and Mfete. Since then, Babayara has become the bedrock of Ghana's football. It was the venue that qualified the country to its first ever World Cup in 2006. The Black Stars won four out of the five qualifiers played at the stadium, scoring nine goals and conceding just once. Played a significant role. At head Stephen Appiah. I had also heard Kofi Amponsa, who was then playing in Greece, Kalamata, in interviews, try to let Ghanaians reason with them that, look, the shouting and overly abusing players when they are not doing well doesn't help them. And that they felt the environment in Accra was way too hostile. So Kumasi became accommodating and they pushed them. Let me tell you this. South Africa needed to lose to Burkina Faso to enable us to qualify. Fans were organized from Kumasi to go to Agadugu and support Burkina Faso to beat South Africa, and they did. So both home and away, you could clearly see the support was way incessant and it was pushing and driving Black Stars on. The impressive record continued as Ghana were once again dominant in Kumasi, winning twice and drawing once to qualify for the 2010 Africa Cup of Nations and World Cup. Between 2012 and 2013, the Babayara faithful witnessed some of Ghana's best football in recent times. During the 2014 World Cup qualifiers, Ghana annihilated Lesotho 7-0, beat Zambia 2-1 and thumped Sudan 4-0 in Kumasi. The ultimate was the 6-1 victory over Egypt on a rainy Tuesday in the third round that all but secured the Black Star slot at the Mundial. Asamoah Gyan scores. Five minutes in and Ghana are in the lead. Okay, well, I'll start by um, saying the Asante Hino um, First of all, you know, he's the, he's the owner of the land and um, the people of the region follow what the king says. And once you go there and the king gives the blessing to the team, it's like telling the whole region that go out in numbers and follow the team. So this is the strategy that the team normally use, uh, uses. They would go out there, meet the king, take some advice from the king. And the king will also say, send his word out. Then the, the, the people will also join in. Then um, three, four days before the match, you already see the vibe in town. In fact, those days, I would say the training session of the Black Stars was near capacity. By the time you get to training, maybe at 4 p.m., by 3 p.m., 
you would have perhaps maybe 20,000 people in the stands. By the time training starts, 30, 35,000. By the time we got, we got onto the bus and we were on the way to the stadium, you could feel it. You could feel it that the supporters were actually urging the team on to go for victory. And um, I remember um, I was just standing by the tunnel where the players would enter the pitch. And as Amwajan told me that, wow, is this the crowd we are having? Told me this is a day we'll make something happen. But little did we expect that, you know, that Egypt team could have been beaten the way it was beaten. And the, the, the fans played their role. When we came out for the warm-up, it was raining. It was raining. The supporters stood in the rain. We finished the warm-up, we went back to the dressing room. We came, they were still standing in the rain, cheering us up. Well, we won the game all right. And then the, the, the support was massive. The country then decided to use a rotational policy for Black Stars games, which saw the team play in Accra, Tamale, Kumase and Cape Coast. Well, there was a feeling um, that, you know, the country, the entire country should get a feel of the, among there was a feeling among management that the entire country should get a feeling or a feel of what the national team is about. And, um, you know, at that time also, uh, I think the Babayara Stadium, the uh, Accra Sports Stadium, and then the Tamale uh, Sports Stadium, were homologated by CAF and FIFA so they could host these matches. After a few years away from the Babayara, the venue returned to hosting Ghana's matches after it received a facelift for 18 months. It was a game for the history books as Ghana faced their arch rivals Nigeria. Ghana had just come off the back of their worst ever performance at a major tournament, finishing bottom of their group without a win at the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations. With the World Cup playoff against the Super Eagles just a few weeks after, there was a huge reliance on the atmosphere at the Babayara. The crowd played a very, very good and an important role in ensuring that, you know, the cup was huge. They had all the biggest names in football, Osimhen, uh, uh, Moses, and all those top names. We didn't have those big names apart from just a few. We're rebuilding our team and all. So it was important that we went to a venue that, that would um, still maintain this level of um, intimidation. It, it wasn't scary. It wasn't scary. I mean, for us, the players, obviously for me, myself, it was a, a good thing for me um, to come out and to see Ghanaians like rooting for us in a big game like that. Obviously, we, we needed them at that at that point in the in the in the qualifiers, and um, yeah, seeing them like that was like was um, a motivation for us to to push more. And then um, knowing that Ghanaians are behind us in a way, it, it gives us um, a bit more of a responsibility, like you said, because um, I'm sure. Um, None of the players who, who is currently in the Black Stars now would want to be part of the team who who, who let that um, history go. I mean, like you said, 23 years ago, that, that was the, first, uh, the last time we lost um, the whole the Black Stars lost uh, playing in Kumasi. So obviously, it, it gives us it gives us more the sort of motivation and then responsibility because you are you are you are you are forced to win the game there and you are also forced not to lose the game there. So obviously, we. It's a good thing for us because in our heads we know that we're not losing here in Kumasi when we're playing in the Kumasi or in, in the stadium uh, in Kumasi. It's been 23 years of supremacy at the Babayara Sports Stadium. Babayara is more than just a stadium, it is an emotion. <laughs> The crowd acts as a boost of adrenaline for the home side, and no matter the form of the Black Stars, they can always be assured of one of the most electrifying atmospheres whenever they make the trip to Kumasi. It's off Goma, the Egyptian captain, and Ghana.